Hello everyone, my name is Shravan, and today I'm going to tell you about RLBox, a framework we built to sandbox third-party libraries in Firefox. So browsers are extremely important. We use browsers for everything, from messaging, working on presentations, or perhaps even attending this very video conference. Browsers thus need to support a very rich set of features and media. But browser vendors cannot simply implement all these features from scratch. Instead, they rely on third-party libraries to support the wide variety of audio, video, and image formats. In practice, this means that browsers use and trust dozens of third-party media libraries from libjpeg, libtheora, libopus, etc. Unfortunately, a bug in any one of these media libraries could potentially compromise the security of the entire browser. We've seen this at several point to owns at this point, but what's, mo what's worse is that attackers use such browser bugs to target people and steal information. In response to this, browser vendors are mitigating the damage from such bugs with coarse screen renderer isolation. By placing the renderer, the code that handles untrusted content like images, in a separate low privilege process, they ensure that bugs in media libraries can't compromise the rest of the browser or system. But remember, everything important is on the web, and so browsers also start, uh, have started isolating different sites from each other. For example, google.com is isolated from zoom.us. Renderer and site isolation are super important, but they don't completely eliminate the problem. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, websites import lots of resources from different origins. In fact, 93% of the Alexa top 500 sites load media, largely JPEGs, cross-origin as we see in this graph. This means that a bug in libjpeg could be exploited by a cross-origin or cross-site attacker. Even on sites that don't load cross-origin resources, an attacker could find a way to host a malicious media file on the same origin. For example, by sharing a malicious media file on Google Drive, an attacker could compromise the renderer process, which in turn permits access to the victim's Google Drive files. What we're seeing today is that untrusted media content can be used to compromise the renderer by exploiting bugs in libraries like libjpeg. To, uh, to address this problem, we need fine grain isolation. We need to isolate libjpeg to ensure that a bug in libjpeg cannot be used to compromise the renderer. But we already know how to do this. Step one, pick an isolation or sandboxing mechanism. For example, you can use a separate process or an in-process software-based fault isolation, such as native client or WebAssembly. Step two, place libjpeg in the sandbox, which ensures it can only access sandbox memory. In other words, let's refactor the browser to the architecture shown on the right. In this model, each library has its own isolated memory separate from the rest of the browser. So, are we done? Unfortunately, no. And, I, and this is because isolation is not the only concern. First, Firefox was written to trust libjpeg. This means Firefox code does not sanitize any data from libjpeg. As we will see on the next slide, this can easily be used to compromise the renderer despite the isolation of libjpeg. Second, isolation mechanisms like WebAssembly introduce ABI differences. If you don't account for these differences, the end result is at best a crash and more likely a compromise. Finally, the data structures and control flow in Firefox and libjpeg are tightly coupled. Decoupling this is error prone and tedious. To give you a flavor of why just isolation is not enough, let's look at some code. This code uses libjpeg to parse and display a JPEG image. Now this is not real Firefox code. Firefox's use of libjpeg is way more complicated. This is simpler, but even so don't worry about understanding it in full just yet. Instead, what we want to see is how an attacker can exploit this code, even with a perfectly isolated libjpeg. First, observe that JPEG image is a data structure that is modified by libjpeg when we call JPEG read header. Second, fields from this data structure are used to compute the size of the mem copy shown here. An attacker can essentially use this as a write gadget to compromise the renderer. This small example is easy to fix. But in general, we found that doing this manually for the huge Firefox code base is painful and easy to mess up. Imagine doing this for dozens of libraries. To precisely address this problem, we built RLBox. 
Arrowbox, uh, the Arrowbox framework is a C++ library that does two things. One, it abstracts the underlying isolation mechanism, whether it is a process isolation or SFI-based isolation. And two, it mediates all application sandbox communication as shown in this figure. It does this by marking all data out of the sandbox as tainted. By marking data from the sandbox as tainted, Arlbox can ensure that unsafe data from the sandbox can only be used after validation. This is also key to automatically bridging ABI differences and automatically performing certain security validations. We use tainted types for many more things, but today I'm going to focus just on these two. So let's see this in action. This is the same JPEG parser code we saw before. This time, let's actually see what this code does. The first three lines simply set up JPEG data structures and initializes them with a call to create de uh, decompress. The next two lines set up the input source, which for a browser would be bytes from an, uh, from an HTTP network request. After this, we use read header to parse the dimensions of the image. Finally, we allocate an output buffer, perform the call to parse the JPEG, which is alighted here, and then copy the data to the screen output buffer. Now that we know what this code does, let's use RLBox to safely decouple and isolate libjpeg from Firefox. For this, first, let's create an RLBox sandbox. Next, we want to invoke libjpeg functions through this sandbox. And this is also straightforward. At this point, let's try to compile this code. When we do, we get an error saying that JPEG image, uh, the JPEG image data structure passed in must be tainted. And this makes sense. LibJPEG cannot access data structures that are in application memory. We must instead allocate the JPEG image data structure in sandbox memory so that LibJPEG can actually access this. So let's make this change. While changing the allocation of JPEG image, we also rename it to p underscore JPEG image for convenience. We now use this new variable we created to fix the compiler error and try compiling again. We now get an error on a different line that we need to fix. In this manner, Arlbox forces us to go through compilation and error fixing cycles. To save some time, let's jump ahead. After fixing several errors, our code looks like this. There are three interesting things in this code. First, p underscore JPEG image is a data structure owned by the libjpeg sandbox and thus potentially has a different API from the rest of Firefox. But conveniently, RLbox automatically adjusts for these ABI differences. Second, when dereferencing a pointer controlled by the sandbox, RLbox automatically adds bounce checks so we don't have to worry about this. Third, RLbox forces the size variable to be marked as tainted since it is influenced by libjpeg data. Now, if we try compiling this, we get a new error indicating that we are using a tainted value for memcopy. This prevents the security vulnerability we talked about earlier. And to fix this, we have to validate size and remove the taint before we use this. We do this with copy and verify. While Arlbox tells us that we need to use copy and verify, we still need to write the actual sanitization check ourselves. So what is the sanitization check we need to write here? Well, we just need to ensure that size is less than the output buffer length. So let's add this check. If you try to compile this, we now see that everything passes telling us that we are done. But how well does all of this work on real code basis? Well, to answer this, we ported six libraries in the Firefox code base. In this talk, I will only briefly summarize a couple parts of this evaluation, the developer effort in using Arlbox and the performance overhead. The full details are, of course, available in the paper. Looking at the developer effort, we found that with Arlbox, it only takes a few days to sandbox a library. This is because, this is because Arlbox automatically performed dozens of bounce checks and nested ABI conversions for us. And while we did have to write between two and 51 data validators for sandbox library, these validators were simple, between two and four lines of code each. Measuring performance 
we found that RRBox minimally impacted page load times and peak memory usage. I'll note that process isolation does not scale as well as SFI-based isolation on some sites like ESPN. And conversely, SFI impacts memory, uh, the peak memory usage a little worse. But this is primarily because we didn't optimize code page sharing across native client sandbox instances. I'd like to conclude this talk with the most, uh, with the most exciting part of this work. We've integrated RLBox into production Firefox to sandbox several libraries using WebAssembly. So if you're watching this on Firefox on a Linux or a Mac computer, your browser is using RLBox right now. Support for the Windows platform and sandboxing of even more libraries in the browser is in the works. Thank you for listening.